Good morning, everybody. We are live streamed. Okay, let's get this redirected here. All right, feels good to be live. Perfect. This is what I like to see. All right. Hey, Brian, good morning. Sergey, Dave, Andre, Timothy, David. Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well today. I hope everybody's having a really nice day. Good morning, Cam. Before we begin, remember, uh, join me at noon today. I'll be uh, to see how we've nailed over 100. That's right, over 130 winners with a 95-plus accuracy, including the... Um, Meta trade we're going to take off this morning and how I plan to do it again in this quarter by clicking the link below. Oh, you guys like the meta this morning. Hi, Chris. Good, 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 good. I'm glad to hear that. And uh, don't forget to join me in my VIP room. And, and folks, I got a treat for you today. Wait till you see our short list. You know, I've been, uh, I've been very, uh, I've been very vocal about lack of shorts. Happy Friday Eve. Roddy, good morning. Thank you for that email yesterday. David, Thomas, I'll be starting in just a minute. Let me just share my screen so that uh, you guys don't have to look at my mug for the next uh, 20 minutes or so. All right. Um, ooh, Nash Vegas, morning from overcast and chilly Nash Vegas. Yeah, it's pretty chilly here too, actually, this morning. Oh, it's already Friday in New Zealand. My, 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 oh my. I'll tell you, you guys, uh, I could use a Friday. I could definitely use a Friday. I was out of town last week um, with my daughter and my wife. We went to Universal Studios and it was Eastern. It was really busy. Note to self, don't, uh, don't, um, don't go on holidays to amusement parks. And uh, thank you, Cam. I'm going to announce that right now. Customer Service Live will be, oh, it'll be shortened today. Okay, usually Customer Service Live is from 10 a.m. to, um, I don't know what, what time you end usually, Cam. That's what I need to, I think it's to one. But today it's going to be from 11 to one. The, there's going to be a company meeting. Thank you for that, Cam. I appreciate that. Dave, Ricky, good morning, 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 morning. And uh, let me post my email here. If you guys have a trading-related question, not a customer service question. I'm no, I'm no good with customer service questions, but but Cam is great with customer service questions. Okay, so wait till you see the short side today. I got a lot to talk to you guys about. So let's start off with the big picture, the market. Uh, we're opening up. Well, I don't know how we're going to be opening up, but we don't have major report. We have this, we have the unemployment report. We have the jobless claims report, which has been a complete nothing burger for the last uh, 211, like what was it, 209? A 215, honestly, this has not moved in two years. This is dead. The VIX is not dead. This, the jobless claims report is dead. Hasn't had any impact on the market in over two years. We do have international trades and goods and services, uh, and that'll be pretty important, but not nearly as important as tomorrow's session when we have the employment data and we have Collins and we have Barkin and we have Bowman speaking. Tomorrow will be a pretty tumultuous day. Now, as a result of that, morning, Kirk, as a result of that, there's a good chance that we may see a subdued session today in the market because if I was an institutional trader and I was an institutional trader, if I was an institutional trader, I would be very, I would be very, very um, quiet and calm and not make big moves because here's the problem. You put on a position today, okay? You get trapped. You can't get out of it. You're holding it overnight. Tomorrow, the employment report doesn't go your way, and then you know what happens next. I don't want to be in that position. I don't like to be stuck. And also, keep in mind, we're trading a lot of stocks that are at pivotal levels. So let's say you're trading a stock at a... Let me let me just show you an example. Uh, 
let's say you're trading um, here. Let's say you're trading this stock right here, FCX, okay, or Dell, one of these two. And let's say you get in right here and you, you think it's going to break out because you got in right here at, say, near 127. I'm just using this as a demonstration. Good morning, Rochelle. Yeah, yesterday was was pretty nice, except it rained like crazy. And, and uh, the power went out in the office for the first time for me since I've started working there. I got to get a backup. I have one. I got it. You guys just reminded me. I got to bring it to work. So, um, so if you get into here and you have an employment report, and let's just say the report, the, the employment report is awful tomorrow, hypothetically speaking, I, I have no idea how it's going to be, but let's say it's, it's awful. And then the market comes down. Well, the stock still looks good, but it'll take you probably another week or two to get out of it. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. Would today favor small caps? Um, no, Adam. I think today favors. I think today favors a more not small caps. Small caps are not defensive. I think today favors defensive stocks that would go up or down whether the report uh, was good or bad. Um, I think healthcare stocks. I think stocks that are not impacted by uh, by the report. My short list today. I've got more. So when you see my short list today, you're going to wonder what's going on because um, my short list today it does not look like a short list from a raging bull market for the first time in three, maybe four months. Remember how the short side has been just like, it's been like, it's it's been like scraping, like trying to scrape trades. It's been, it's been very difficult today. Oh man, I looked at my short list. I was like, uh, I was like, wow, wow! I'm, 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 I'm really excited about the short side, and you'll see why. And and again, it doesn't mean I get it. When I get excited about the short side, it doesn't mean the markets are going to fall apart. It just means the stocks that are coming up on my list are looking really, really good. Um. Yeah, you're right, Brian. But see, the power, the power surge was like. We have uh, we have um, cable. We have um, that the, the underground, whatever it's called, fiber optic, and it turns back up really fast. My laptop turned off and on. I didn't even notice it. So if I had the power, I'd be back up much faster, and I wouldn't have to reset all of my programs. That was the the big. That's what took a long time yesterday. Well, three minutes, but but I don't want that because what if I'm in a trade and I want to get out of something? It's just. We don't have those type of storms around here very often, but I'm going to, I have it right here. I have a backup right here and I don't work from home anymore except for this. So I'm going to, I'm going to take it to work today and have Matt set it up for me. Um, all right. So let's, let's talk about the market. Let's talk about a lot of th things. So market is strong today. Again, pre, pre-employment report, pre-employment date. I would expect there would be some degree of, um, uh, of, of consolidation today. I don't know if we're going to see a lot of follow through. I don't know if this rally is going to continue much into the morning. I'm going to be very cautious today. And plus, it's been a really good week for us in terms of performance, especially in the pit. So I'm I'm going to take it easy today. And I'm not going to, I'm going to look for shorts and I'm going to let trades come to me. But uh, more importantly, the market is gearing up. You could tell right now that the fact that whenever you see the NASDAQ up close to the Dow, you could tell techs are stronger because the value of the NASDAQ is about half of the Dow more than half of the Dow, so or roughly half of the Dow. So you could tell if this is up 77, it would be equivalent of the Dow being up about 140, which is not random. So whenever you see tech close to the Dow, you could tell it's just a little tip for you. So you could see that it's 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 very strong today, where the Dow is just on the fringe of being beyond random. But we had really good flow coming in yesterday in terms of the market, and we saw... Um, the, a fairly broad market rally yesterday, and that really helped us out a lot in terms of volatility. Um, I mentioned this. I mentioned this yesterday, real, real quick. That volatility. Remember, I drew these lines. God knows how long ago. Well, right here, I guess. Uh, I drew these lines about two months ago. Nothing changed. If a good tip for you would be this: you want to see volatility do kind of like this to the upside. If you see a spike like this. It's usually meaningless. You want to see volatility climb slowly higher, slowly. That means there's something really going on. If you see two, three days like that, it's usually a fade. So volatility isn't really doing anything. It's already breaking below yesterday's low right here. You could see 
we're already we're already below we're already below yesterday's low. Um, I'm just not seeing anything nasty coming into the market, and the fact that a lot of blue chips and tech stocks rallied yesterday, including Micron. I know you guys made out like Micron. Uh, Richard, uh, my phone. I don't give out my phone number, but um, but uh, customer service. You guys got that. You can you can send my email to me, and it'll get to me. Um, a few people have my phone number, but uh, not not uh, not everybody. I don't give my. I give I give so much of myself out. I think this is more than enough. So again, uh, consolidation, consolidation, choppy, choppy trading action. Um, but if you want the company's phone number, uh, Cam, maybe you can post the customer service phone number here or the company's phone number where Richard can call and relay more info, info to me. That would be really cool. Thank you. So right here, we 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 don't look like like volatility is going to rally today, which means we're going to stay fairly tight. And uh, remember, if the market does this, it doesn't do anything. Volatility will just drop off. So the market doesn't have to work or do anything for volatility to drop. It basically has to do very little. But on the other hand, to, in order to see volatility spike, the market has to do a lot. So the burden of proof is always on the on the, uh, on the the bad stuff happening. Basically, when anything other than bad stuff happens, volatility goes down. So it's, it's very, very straightforward in terms of that. Let's talk a little bit about uh, global economy. Every oh my stuff didn't get erased. Look at that. It always gets erased, but today didn't. And then I'll talk about levels. So the big report is going to be the job report We're heading into tomorrow. Uh, the sentiment of tomorrow's report will probably be reflected in the market in the second part of the day. Although I'm not expecting anything crazy to happen. Uh, chip stocks. It was a very interesting day yesterday. Western Digital, which was on my morning. By the way, this stock was on my morning list yesterday. I don't know if you guys remember. And Micron, we've been talking about Micron quite a bit in uh, in the trading pit. I know a lot of folks made money on it, whether you took the swing trade or you took the day trade. Intel did not do well. If Intel did well yesterday, we would have had an amazing day. So Intel kind of uh, was down 8% and took a lot of the tailwind out of uh, Western Digital and Micron. Uh, Intel's actually on my short side for the first time in ages. We had an ADP report that shows the payroll, that the jobs, uh, the job market is very, very, very strong, that employers are controlling the job market, not employees. That means it's a deflationary period. Uh, we had the ISM manufacturing. It, it came in, service index came in lower than expected, um, and, and, and the trailing came in a little bit above. Here's where things get, this, this is not, this wasn't really all that material, and I, so I don't want to waste time with it. Here's where, where things get really interesting. Remember, this was at 62%. Now it's at 55%. And remember, we go through the same thing every day. We don't go, we, we, we're not those kind of, we, 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 we continue the soap opera every day, wherever it takes us. He said yesterday, policymakers would await clearer indication of lowering inflation before considering interest rate cuts. Little kid, when I say the kid, the kid is institutional traders, okay? The, the, the kid with the bike, the, tan, the, the little kid with the tamper tantrum, that's institutional traders. So he keeps telling that damn stubborn kid, you're not getting the bike. It's not coming anytime soon. It's not happening in the summer. And the kid finally, 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 he feels 10%. The sentiment from the kid is 10% that, well, Maybe I'll, I won't get it in the summer, but I'm still going to get it in the fall. So let it roll. That's what the kid's thinking. He still keeps thinking he's getting that bike sooner than later. No matter what the Fed keeps telling them, no matter what mom and dad keep telling the kid, he's still, because if he was, ex, if the market would, would expect, accept this, this would be a 30%, 20%. Thank you, Cam. Uh, so what did he say? He said they would wait cl for a clearer indication of lower inflation. That's exactly what I'm saying. You're not there yet. We need clo we need we, we're just not there yet. Um, but institutional traders are the smart. Who who told you they are the smart money, David? Dave, they've been making the wrong move on bond market for the for the last year straight. Why do you think they're smart money? You don't see quarters of institutions losing money just like everybody else. I trade like an institutional trader. I'm not always right. 
They're people too, you know. They have losing quarters too. They make big mistakes. Institutions were betting on interest rates going higher sooner than later, okay? Uh, they 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 thought interest rates were, excuse me, lower sooner than later. Okay, so let me explain this. You know what? Let me do this and then I'll show you through the bond market and I'll explain it to you. I'll give you some common sense. Dave, you've been you've been reading too much stuff online. You've been really reading too you you're like programmed. Why do you think retail traders are typically losing money? Do you think buy and hold investors are typically losing money? Forget all that stuff. Forget all that stuff. Institutional traders lose institutional traders lose money all the time. <laughs> and they make mistakes all the time. All the time. So don't don't think, uh, if you don't believe me, I'll show you some of their performance numbers and then you'll believe me. You know, Dunn Capital, the biggest commodity fund, a averages 55% drawdowns every other year. Did you know that? Did you know that, Dave? The biggest fund manager in the world, a billionaire, he has a 55% down, 55% drawdown every two years. Think about that for a minute. Think about that. All right, let's continue. So the Powell is being he's being the adult in the room. He mentioned recent higher than expected inflation figures. Hey, he's right. Did not materially change. I agree. I agree. He reiterated that anticipation it'll likely be appropriate to start reducing at some point this year. I agree with him. Right around election time, around December. What did Bostic say? Finally, somebody who's totally being honest. Probably be appropriate to lower rates in the fourth quarter. Hmm, I wonder where we heard that before. So, and but what does the market say? No, 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 it's going to happen sooner. It's going to happen sooner. It's going to happen sooner. Okay, market, you keep thinking that the market is institutional traders. You keep thinking that. I'll show you I'll show you something Dave in a few seconds, okay? It'll 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 open up your eyes. As they say in Europe, it'll open up America for you. Uh Initial claims, we're not, I'm not even going to talk about this, whether the number was 213,000 or 209,000 or 220,000 or 200,000. It's been around the low 200,000s for two to four years now, this number. It's not going anywhere today. I promise you. We will be live here talking about it in 13 minutes. It will not impact the market. This May, the uh, trade balance, we'll see where it stands. Europe. Europe is interesting. I, I highlighted Germany. Germany's the biggest economy in Europe. Look at their PMI. It was actually stronger than expected. That's important. That's important. Very, very important. Uh, what's been going on in Europe? Let's see. Investors digested a raft of regional economic data, looked ahead to release of the minutes of the European Central Banks. That'll be interesting. Can't wait to hear that. Mining and auto stocks outperformed on Thursday while media stocks lost ground. A survey showed on Thursday that Eurozone business activity returned to growth in March for the first time since May of 2023. Right? Late 2023. May, not late, May 2023. That's fantastic. That helps us a lot. And, and just to show you, Germany's kicking it. This is really good because a lot of folks thought that real estate market was going to go down a lot there. I don't think it will after this. This is actually really good. Uh, let me change the color here so we could see what we're reading. Uh, index, the Nikkei closed higher today. Utility, financial, electronic stocks outperformed in uh, Thursday. The yen flat against the dollar. Former top currency diplomat said Thursday, Japanese authorities are unlikely to intervene in the currency market unless the yen falls below 155 to the dollar. They are just being stubborn idiots, okay? Uh, stubborn idiots. As far as earnings today, you've got Block. This will this may impact PayPal. Okay, uh, you got BlackBerry. It's not going to impact anything. And you got Levi's, which may impact uh, stores like Gap and other retailers. Now, alone, R Levi's is not a really a material stock, but retail is a very material sector, and it may be moved as a result of that. So let's talk a little bit about levels. Okay. And I think that I've gotten a couple of emails. Folks are telling me that these levels really help them gain clarity intraday. So if you want to take a screenshot or a picture, please feel free to do so. Now, remember, I drew these how long ago? Let's see. Uh, like a month ago, two, three weeks ago. I don't change them. All right. So 
What happened yesterday? We huffed and puffed here. Remember yesterday I said we were already bouncing back into this level. And I also told you yesterday, and you should listen to me when I tell you things, that we traverse levels that we cross. So we, tr we, we came back into this level yesterday. And what happened? We went all the way and tested the top. Now, I'm just connecting this level here. How accurate was my, this is today. How accurate are my levels? Once, twice, three. This this is, don't believe me? Look it up. Look it up. Yeah, Cam, they use it for commercial use. They use it for parts and commercial use. They do. They're changing their, they change their focus completely. They're now getting into towers, cell towers, things like that, Cam, for 5G. So it's, yeah, so it's, it's a different business model. So remember, I drew this a while back. Yesterday, we were right here. I drew this and I said, we're going to go, if we if we cross back up here, we're going to come back up. We came back up and now we're right here. The question is, are we now going to stay in this level? Give or take. That level is between 522.60 and 520.81. If we break down this level with gusto, with gusto, yes, I said gusto, then we're going to probably kiss this level and go all the way down. If we come up to this level and break up, we're going to have a chance to test the highs. I don't know what's going to happen today. I have no clue. Um, I don't, I'm not expecting that much volatility because we have the big report tomorrow. So we'll, we have to be very careful. But this is the SPY. And uh, should you be watching my levels? What, what do you guys think? This is yes. This is, I drew this back, back when. Look at my levels. Look at the highs right here. It'd be nice to know what the highs were yesterday, and you could have hit them three times, and then and then shorted the market and taken it all the way down here, and then maybe even went long around these levels and got out here. Somebody yesterday was using this to trade the pit. I wonder what his name is. Hmm. Let me guess. So let's look at the QQQ now. Let's see what our levels are. And remember, I don't move these levels. They're the same levels. I just keep moving them forward. All right. So let's see where we're at here. Hmm. Look at that. We huffed and puffed, went into this level, traversed this level, kissed it, and then went right back into this level and then went all the way and touched it above. So let's now continue our levels right here. Look at that right there. So now we're above here. The question is going to be, are we going to be flirting with all-time highs in the NASDAQ? It sure looks like it. Or are we going to go back to the 443.78 level? The level you want to write down today would be uh, 443.78-ish. And again, I don't, I'm not using like a ruler to draw these. I'm just moving them forward. So they're going to be a little higher, a little lower, you know, half a point, uh, you know, uh, this is not a math exercise, but somewhere in the 443, high 443 areas. And then uh, this is important, but this is more important right here. So remember, if we break this level here, we're going to probably traverse all the way down. But if we stay here for the morning session, there's a good chance we'll go back up here and test these highs, all-time highs. See, we're now here, and then here's all the time. So it's nice that we're in this level, that we're not in the doghouse. Let's now look at the Dow. Yeah, it is, Alex. It is. Hope you're doing well. Hope you made money on the meta trade that we're going to take off this morning or if, if, if the market rallies this morning. I mean, who knows what's going to happen between now and an hour from now. So the Dow. Dow, remember the insurance news hit, hit the blue chips pretty hard. Industrial stocks took off. So the blue chips are now uh, the, the blue chips are not in their first tier level. They're now in this level. Now, interestingly, look at yesterday. You can't make this stuff up if you tried, right? I'm just if you don't believe me, look at yesterday's video, look at the video from the day before yesterday. I'm not a magician, okay? I'm not I'm not doing anything crazy. Look at the low yesterday. Nope. Nope, Garen. They were originally based on my technical levels and my eye. Nothing else. That's it. Just my eyes. And I just keep put, all I'm doing is moving them forward. Here, this is a little off right here. There it is. Look at yesterday's. This is yesterday. Nope. Nope.
30 years of experience, Garen. So look at the Dow yesterday. How good are these levels, guys? One, two, three, four, five, six. Pretty damn good, right? You could you could you could trade for a living based on these levels. So if we go above thirty nine thousand two hundred and sixty and stay there, we're going to flirt with this level again, right? Remember my my theory: if it moves if it moves into another level, it will traverse that level. I'm going to give you guys about ten rules to, to how to deal with the of how to trade these levels. I'm going to give you guys some rules in the VIP room next week, but there's like ten rules that I use to trade these levels. But uh, notice where we're at. So the key level right now you want to pay attention to, it, it just blows my mind away how accurate these levels are. I am just I just use pivots, previous pivots. Uh, 392.61, three, how about this, 39,000? If we go below 39,000, we're not going to be in a good position. If we go above 39,255, 39,260, we'll be in a good level. Charting and you do it well, it is what you finally pounded into my head. <laughs> yeah, it does work really, really. Wait, wait, wait till you see us doing market profile. Whew. You guys are going to poop yourselves. I'm going to spoil, I'm trying to spoil you guys so that you can't, so that no other guy, so that, so you guys stop listening to everybody else and just listen to me. All right. So the key levels, I'd like to see this. I'd like to see us break out. That's right, Dave. That's right. I'd like to see us break out of this level. And that's the the 30, the, the halfway 39,000 uh, level. Okay. Very, very, very important. Now I want to teach you guys something about institutions. So this is the bond market, right? Let's, this is the bond market. I drew this a while ago. Institutions, why Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Because institutions, guys, please, please, thank you, Anastasia. Please listen carefully to what I'm about to say. You're not going to learn this from Kramer, especially folks who think institutions are always right. Institutions, institutions thought, okay, that interest rates, institutions listened to the Fed and they believed what the Fed was saying six months ago. So what institutions did was they bought a shitload of bonds, okay? A shitload of bonds around here, around here, okay? Why would they buy bonds? What happens when interest rates go down? Bonds go up. What happens when interest rates go up? Bonds go down. The, the funds were holding and they thought that they, they weren't listening, they weren't watching Uncle Roger. They actually thought there was a 68% chance that the Fed was going to start lowering rates in March. They still believe that the rates, remember, they're stubborn bastards. They're that little kid. They believe that institutions, that they believe that the Fed was going to start lowering rates a lot sooner than they did. So what happened? They realized last week that it ain't going to happen. And they, they unloaded their bond position. They sold, they liquidate, this is funds liquidating their bond position. They, hey, infinitely, they, inf they, they liquidated the bond position because now they believe that rates are not going to go down in March or June, possibly, or maybe even in July. You know, it's kind of funny because I know somebody who's been saying that for a hell of a long time now. It's finally starting to sink in. Why do I say starting to sink in? Because they're, because they're still stubborn bastards. They got to they got to come back up here and stay in this range. And then if the Fed says, well, we may not lower rates this year, guess what's going to happen here? It's going to come back up to this area and maybe even try to break out. But this is funds. Finally, finally, this is the kid finally saying, maybe I'm not going to get that bike. You guys understand that? So you're going to tell me they're not wrong? Really? They're not wrong. This is funds. This is not me liquidating bonds. This is hedge funds liquidating bonds right here. So yeah, they were wrong. I was right. They were wrong. Right here. All right. So I think bonds are going to come right back into here and keep doing this. And then finally, when we get closer to, uh, say, September, and the Fed is still saying, it's going to happen sometimes this year, but we're not sure when. I think the feds will finally start saying, well, it'll probably happen in December or January, and then finally it'll start falling off. 
So I think this channel, I think this is a little premature. I think we're going to come back into the channel because I think the the, the hedge funds finally realized, uh oh, we we took Powell a little too too literally. Yeah, wake up call aisle ten. Thank you. Exactly. So don't tell me that the funds don't make mistakes. They make mistakes all the time, all the time. And we can capitalize on them all the time. We just have to keep our eyes open and be objective. All right. So I gave you levels. I explained that bond, that the institutional traders make mistakes all the time. Because think about it. Why would this go down? Why would this go down? Because they're liquidating their position. Because they thought they thought this was going to go up. Bonds go up. Yield goes down. So, oh, 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 it's not, it's not breaking up right here. Oh, shit, it's breaking down. Let's liquidate. You know, guys, the markets tell a story if you are wise enough and objective enough to just pay attention and listen to what it's telling you, okay? Sector fragmentation. So here's the one week. Are the, are the colors next to each other? Hell no. Green, red, red, green, red, green, yellow. They're nowhere near each other. Look. Nowhere near each other. This is what they're supposed to look like. Red, then green, then yellow. This is what they're supposed to look like. All yellows, all reds, and then all greens. This is what they're supposed to look like. All greens, all reds, or yellows, and then the greens are supposed to be next to each other. The yellows are supposed to be next to each other. And the reds are supposed... Thank you, Brian, again, for doing this. Look at it over the last week. Did they look like... Did they look... One second. Did they look to you... Did they look to you like they're next to each other? No. Fragmentation, boys and girls. Fragmentation. What about number... Which means listlessness. What about, what about number of stocks making 90-day highs and lows? We always look at that, right? Very important. Nothing crazy. 216.54. Plenty of rhythm to move to the upside. Plenty of plenty of upside and plenty of downside. Plenty. Do the bonds correlate with the stock market? It depends, Cheryl, if we're Sh Sh Sherlin, excuse me, Sherlin. It depends if we're in an inflationary or a deflationary market cycle. We're in an inflationary market cycle. So in an inflationary market cycle, Bond, bonds go up when interest rates move lower versus the other way. So it just depends on which stocks, which sector of stocks and what's happening with the markets. But it depends on whether the market is, whether we're in an inflationary period, deflationary period. Garen says, what is the significance of sector fragmentation? It me When stocks go up, great question. When stocks go up, 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 up. Sectors get really fragmented and out of balance, which means market starts getting listless and 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 they they don't have that intraday firepower. Notice when markets get notice last few days we've been having movement in the market during the day versus just a nasty gap up or a gap down and just listless listlessness. That's what happens when markets are not for think about a basketball. Think about bouncing a basketball. When markets are fragmented. The basketball only goes this far from the ground. When markets are defragmented, and markets get defragmented when they pull back down and correct. When markets get defragmented, the basketball can the, the basketball gets a lot of air in it. The air comes out of the basketball as markets go up. The air gets into the basketball as the market goes down. You're not going to learn that from Jim Cramer or anybody else except an institutional trader. That's the significance. So when markets are defragmented, so when you have all the sectors all over the place and you have 450 stocks making 90-day highs, the market's going to be like this. Out of rhythm, out of whack, nothing's going to be moving right. The song is going to be played off. The, the, the vocals are going to be behind the guitar by like half a second and the drums are going to be ahead. Everything gets out of whack. Then the market cools off, markets rest, they get correlated again, the sectors come into play, the markets become rhythmic again. They can move during the day session. So the more defragmented the market, the more fragmented the markets get, the less directional bias you're going to get from the market. Okay? Hey, I think we just broke a record here. 289 people. Look at that. 
Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So you guys have to kind of, what I'm trying to teach you is look at the markets three-dimensionally, not one-dimensionally like this. Look at the markets as a, as a, as a living auction because that's what a market is. It's an auction. And you guys are part of that auction. And if you don't understand that, then I'm trying to teach you that. All right, let's talk about stocks, okay? Let's see if we can break 300 people today. That would be uh, a record. But let, let's go through some stocks. So markets are still rhythmic. They're still rhythmic. We only have 216 stocks. We're not at 450, but they're still out of whack. I mean, look at this. They're still out of whack. Communication services belongs over here. It's it's a tech, tech sector last time I checked. Uh, semiconductors belong down here. They're tech last time I checked. Russell 2000 is very speculative. It belongs closer to here than up here. The, the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones do not belong next to each other. Have do you guys understanding this? It, they're, they're out of whack. I've posted in Telegram channel something that has one, two, and three, and I showed it to you yesterday. And that shows you which sectors should be next to each other. And you guys should have that. But the more, the more down the market goes, the more in line they will get the more out of line the market. See, like if you have the Dow next to QQQ, your drums and your bass are going to be out of whack with each other. You're not going to, because think about it. They got to, just common sense. Blue chips, utilities, basic materials, and chip stocks, they don't, they, so they cause, so what happens is when, when sectors are out of whack, one sector is going to go up, the other sector is going to go down and they'll ground the market so that you'll get this. But when, when you have, let's say, all tech aligned, it will be more flowing like this, more rhythmic, rhythmic, rhythmic. Okay, so let's now go through our stocks. Sorry, guys, I talk a lot here, but I do it to help you. I, I mean, I hope all, hopefully all of the, I don't, I don't do a lot of fluff talk. Um, let's go to our settings. We're finally, I'm going to do the short side. We're finally getting some stocks to the short side. Hey, 300. We hit 300. Let me uh, make a screenshot of that. That's pretty cool. That's cool. One second. Let me just. Uh... There we go. That's cool. Very cool. That made me happy. I'm, I'm, I want to get a thousand people into this room before the end of this year, every single morning. Thank you, Carlos. I appreciate it. Cam, you're my uh, you're my actuary for this. Flying Ronin, how are you, Flying Ronin? All right, let's do the short side first. Now wait till you see these guys. Wait till you see these. Whew. The, this is not good. Check out the short the stocks that I'm showing you today to the short side. Intel. Granted, near the 200-day moving average, but this is a breakdown. This is no good, and on high volume, too. Oh, I know. I know I will. Uh, Nike, notice big names, not little cocker stocks, big names. Look at that. Big names. Um, this is the first time I've had a short list this uh, fruitful, probably in five months, I have not had a short list this fruitful since probably since we started the, officially the pit. We had it in the summer, but we haven't had a short list this fruitful since we officially started the pit five months ago or four months ago. Um, look at this, all big stocks. Thanks infinitely. Another one. Look at this. This is these are large stocks. These are not little cockers like we were used to, right? Look at this one. Yeah, yeah. I think you're. Look at McDonald's, guys. Look at this thing. McDonald's, Intel, Nike, Guild. How about this one? I mean, I, I'm not excited that McDonald's is falling from the sky, but 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 that but that's that's a big red flag for us. BIIB. Um, oh, how about this one? Do you do you see? Do you guys see how fertile the shortlist is today? 
Intel, Nike, Starbucks, uh, and I'm not, I'm only, I mean, I'm not even done yet. This one can go all the way to the 200 right here, but Expedia is breaking down. Um, restoration, uh, this stock right here, Ro excuse me, Robert Half. Just look at this thing. I am going to be looking at every one of these stocks this morning. Uh, now some small ones. If you want to call this a small stock. We've been talking about this one for a while. And here's another big one. Mondel this is a big consumer staple company. Look at that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And then uh, we gave, I gave you guys the stock as a, in, in the pit a few, about a week ago, week and a half ago. Do you guys remember? I gave you uh, this stock in the pit a few weeks ago. N not in the pit, in the VIP room, sorry. Not in the pit, in the VIP room a few weeks ago. And uh, here's the last one. So you tell me, tell me right now, We've been doing we've been doing long and short side for a while. Have you guys seen a short list? Um, have you guys seen a short list this fruitful for me? Tell, I'm just telling you how it is. That's bothering me. That's bothering me. Now let's do the long side, okay? Wow, three fifteen in the room. Look at that. It shook a lot of people out. I think a lot of people got scared. I think a lot of people got scared because the stock went up here. But it but look. All it did was test, it went, broke down the 200-day moving average, tested the 200-day moving average, didn't break above, and then went right back down. Yeah, big hitters, right? A lot of market cap stocks to the downside. All right, upside. Amazon. Looks beautiful. I think we called Amazon in, in, the, in the pit this week. We had a lot of trades this week in the pit. We're, we're very fruitful this week in the pit. CVX, Chevron, I think this still has some firepower left. Netflix. Can't say about Tesla the same, but look at Netflix. R exactly, does he? Not that with that many big companies. We've been, we've been, I've been, look, I've been struggling to find shorts for you guys. Struggling, st like struggling, like picking the bottom of the barrel because there just hasn't been any. My list will give me 10 and half of them will be ETFs. And then the other three stocks will be liquid. And I mean, we're getting some players to the upside now. CMI, um, core. I have more shorts today than longs. This is beautiful, core. GoDaddy. I'm excited about GoDaddy. GoDaddy. Looks fantastic. We may get an opportunity to buy it at the eight-day EMA today. I like strong stocks that pull back to the eight-day EMA. General Dynamics. I'm almost done, guys. I know we're taking a long time. General Dynamics, I like how it's holding this level here, and I like the volume too. Uh, Allstate. I think somebody mentioned Allstate or some insurance stock a little while ago. Progressive and Prudential. Kirk, also Allstate. Allstate. This stock looks fantastic. Um, just a few more. And Newmont. Yes, gold stocks. I think gold may have some more upside. Keep an eye on this 200-day moving average, but if gold continues, the stock will start rallying. I would prefer we watch it. We I prefer we go long after it crosses the 200-day moving average. That's my only beef there. And last one, Kroger. I think Kroger is still positive, and I don't think I don't think like supermarket stocks. They're very certain sectors are very in, influenced by interest rates. Certain ones are not. Like supermarkets, whether interest rates go up or not, you're still going to be buying food, and if food is expensive, it's still going to be passed on to the consumer. So they have less impact. Healthcare stocks have less impact of interest rates. So again, it just depends on the sector. But it was a great question that somebody asked me earlier. All right, folks, before I let you go, I want you to join me noon today to see how we've nailed over 131 winners with a 95% plus accuracy and how we plan on doing it again. Uh, it, it'll be a day. It'll be a very cool day. We called it fresh high second quarter market outlook. 
I'm going to be talking about my big predictions for gold market, energy stocks, and I've got a special surprise for you today. I'll give you my top three gold and energy stocks. Uh, please, please, please come, come there, join me, support me. It's happening at noon today. It's happening at noon today. And lastly, before I let you go, we put on this stock yesterday before the close. We put on this stock yesterday before the close, Meta, in the uh, trading pit. And I'm probably going to get out of it close to the open. So if you are in the pit, please pay attention. You're going to get an alert from me to close out Meta and take a really big, juicy, fat profit. Uh, correlation between gold and Bitcoin, do they move together? They don't move together, Penny. They don't. They don't. They actually, they move quite opposite. I'll talk about that later today. If you if you send me an email and remind me, I'll bring it up today and I'll do a correlation study for you. I'll see you guys later. Have a fantastic day. Sorry, I took a little longer than usual, but it was worth it. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you guys supporting me. Bye.